as well. Yes, Paul. well, uh, thank you. Um, I'm Paul Ringham. I'm the commercial director of Virador. Um, Virador is the largest UK-owned resources and energy recovery company. Um, and we're part of the Pennon Group, and, which is a FTSE 250 company. Um, we look upon ourselves as a very responsible operator in this area. And I'll come on to that a little bit later on when we talk briefly on waste crime, which is having a big impact on some of the agendas we've talked about here today. But in summary, there's not much you can argue with that anyone has said on this panel. But the point I would say is that it's not going to change overnight. So as a responsible producer, we're trying to work out how we can become part of the solution in the immediate and short term. And we are already the largest reprocessor of HDPE and PET, which, as Sandy says, are the, these are the good plastics that you can effectively recycle many, many times. We, we were at the forefront of plastics recycling. We've had a plant in Skelmersdale that's been running for at least 30 years, and we've got one of the biggest plastic sortation plants in Rochester. And we've made two big announcements recently at our year-end uh, um, announcement. We're going to invest £65 million in what will be the largest UK multi-polymer reprocessing plant down in Avonmouth. And the reason it's positioned in Avonmouth is that it's going to be co-located with one of our ERFs, our energy recovery facilities, and it's going to take the power off of that to process the, the reprocess the plastic. It's going to be, as I say, the largest one in the UK, and it's something that we are very proud of. It's, it's been a bold step, and we've worked very closely with the producers, with the retailers, with the local authorities, because we want to design a process that is going to address the problems of the plastics that are being produced today then, and that are in the system. And we've got to try and stop them getting in the system. That, that is our key objective. Once they're deep in the system, they're a hell of a lot harder to treat. The second announcement we've made is that we, by the end of next year, our corporate aim is to stop any recycling, uh, any export of plastics. At the moment, of the million tonnes that is collected of plastic in the UK, two-thirds of it is still exported to overseas, usually the Far Eastern markets. And this is where I touch on waste crime, because there are a lot of unscrupulous operators that will export it. They won't have done their proper checks, compliance, regulatory, end-user end checks to make sure it's going to a responsible reprocessor, and that's where you end up with it being stockpiled on, on the side of Indonesian mountains, which is absolutely appalling. So we look upon ourselves as very much a responsible operator who wants to be part of this solution. And we see the solution before we have some of those real, and you're absolutely right, we need a big seismic shift but that's not going to happen in the immediate. It's probably not going to happen for a number of years to come. So we need to deal with the problem here and now. That's what we're trying to do. And we're putting our own money behind it in order to make it happen. The next thing I'd just like to touch on is what we think needs to happen in order to get the plastics agenda really going and really moving in the right direction. And, and absolutely agree with what a number of people have said. The, uh, resources and waste strategy had a lot of good things in it. When is it really going to get converted to action? You know, we, you, you, again, you can't argue with some of the concepts, but as someone said, they're only out of consultation, they're being reconsulted on. They, there's a lot of very difficult, complex issues, and, and the one reform that I would really say, two people have, have mentioned it here, the, the PRN regime, and more importantly, the PERN which is the export PRNs. They actively incentivise people to export not just plastics, a number of other recyclables that should be being processed in the UK. So that has got to change. And, and if it doesn't, we are going to be pushing water uphill. The, the second thing I'd say is investment in general re recycling infrastructure hasn't really happened for the last 10 years. And... and that means that the plastic that we're trying to recycle makes it so much harder before you can even get it in the reprocessing plant. And the, the money at the moment, and I absolutely get it, the local authorities have got some big decisions to make about where they put their funding, but we as a private sector player are trying to work with the local authorities. We've done it in, in Suffolk County Council where we're entering into partnerships with them 
to we will invest in the material recycling facilities on the back of coming up with a sensible, and I stress sensible, contract to deal with the dry mixed recycling for the next number of years. The reason we like that is that gives, gives us the feedstock that we can control, we can, we can manage it in a proper orderly way and recycle it and reprocess it properly. Third thing I'd say is we've got to be able to look upon recycling as an industry and therefore it must make a sensible return. Otherwise the investment won't be there, the innovation won't be there. So it's not, I, I would never apologise for people making sensible returns in the way they recycle, because that's the only way it's really going to grow and really going to get critical mass. But it's got to be sensible returns. We don't want people profiteering. And again, that links back to the waste crime agenda. And then finally, on the, on the key drivers we've got, it, it really is the change in customer behaviour. And when I say customer, the people are recycling the material in the first place. We did our um, recycling index for 2019, which is a survey we go out and we test the um, attitudes, the thinking of people that are actually doing the recycling. And astoundingly, only one in three people still fully understand which bin their recycling needs to go in. One in three, that's 34%. And, that is, and the, the most interesting fact, that fell from last year. The, 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 the other one that really hit home was 46% felt they didn't have enough information to actually work out what they should be doing generally across recycling, not just putting it in the right bin. And again, it comes down to the, the, the pressures that the local authorities have on. A lot of the education programmes and campaigns that used to be run have stopped. And as soon as you stop running them, behaviours change, and they change in a bad way. And that's when you get contamination into the recycler. Contamination in the recycler is a bad thing. People can't process it and then you have to dispose of it in alternate ways, which we are desperate to avoid. So just to wrap up, I know you want to get to questions. Um, it's a, it is a really difficult problem that we're trying to address, but responsible operators like Virador and like some of our competitors are trying to do it in the right way. I'm very optimistic in what is happening, both in the industry, but also in the, in the, in the public um, perception of what they need to do. We, the, the Blue Planet effect we thought was just going to be a, sp a spike, and it's not. It's really sustainable. And what we've got to do is harness that momentum, make sure it is, is sensibly profitable in a sustainable way that is going to give us an industry that's going to deal with the problems in the long run, not just in the short run. <laughs>